Hi everyone, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars and this is a, uh, a video on some tips and techniques to get up and running and how to use the Space Probe 130 ST uh, telescope. So I'm going to assume you've read the manual and you've familiarized yourself with the parts and you've got it to uh, pretty much this uh, level of uh, assembly already. So there's two things you need to do before you go outside and start viewing the night sky. Uh, the first is balancing the telescope and then the second is aligning the finder scope. Let's start with balancing. Uh, the two lock knobs, loosen them and you can move it east to west along the uh, right ascension axis here and then north and south along the declination axis here. To make sure it's balanced, just tip the telescope off to the side, uh, don't let go, uh, and basically remove your hands for a second and see which direction the telescope is going to be falling. See, so right now I'm pretty close but obviously it's falling in this axis right here, right ascension. And what that means is my counterweight is not heavy, heavy enough to balance it. So I'm going to loosen it here and slide it back down the shaft, but right there, and I'll try again. There we go. It's not, uh, it's not moving in that one direction. Now it is slowly moving up in declination, which means that the back of the telescope is a little too heavy. So I'll loosen the two screws on the rings, and I can shift the telescope down in the rings. Well, actually, I want to shift it up in the rings a little bit. Loosen it, shift it up a little bit to about right there, lock it back down, and then try again. Now, I went a little too far, now it's a little uh, scope heavy. So just go back and forth until you find the right balance point. Make sure you put your finder scope and your eyepiece on there because that weight's going to be on there when you're using the telescope. So I'm probably pretty close right there. There we go. So next is the finder scope. If the finder scope is not aligned, you will never find anything in the night sky. It's impossible. Even with a low power eyepiece, the field of view is pretty narrow compared to naked eye. So it's difficult. It's like looking through a straw to find some object in the sky. Uh, I like to do it during the day. Uh, the first time it's going to be the hardest because you can't use the finder to aim it. So look off in the distance, find a tree or a power pole, something about a quarter mile or more away, and point the main telescope at it. Aim it out there just to pretend here. Use the slow motion knobs, east and west, north and south here, to get the corner of the building or whatever target you're using in the very center of your eyepiece. Once that's done, look through your finder scope and you'll notice it's probably in there but it's not on the crosshair. When you just slide the finder scope on, it will not be aligned. It'll be a little bit off from the, the direction that the main scope is pointing. So just use the two screws on the side of the finder to adjust it to get the crosshair right on the same thing you're looking at in there. You might want to go back and forth a couple times just to make sure you didn't bump the telescope and you're not, again, looking at the corner of the building. Once that's calibrated, then you're good. Then you can use the finder scope to find something in the night sky and you can be assured that it will be uh, in the center of the eyepiece. Now the mount itself has to be polar aligned in order for it to track in the proper direction. So if you look down on the bottom of the telescope here, you've got this right ascension axis. That's the direction that the Earth spins, east to west. And just imagine a line drawn through this axis up into the sky. That has to be pointed at Polaris all the time, no matter what you're doing. So I can be looking to the south here. I can be looking north. If you notice, wherever I'm looking, straight overhead, this is still pointing in that one direction. That's where Polaris is. That's where the North Pole is. So in order to do that, look on the side of the mount on the very bottom, and you'll see the latitude scale. Uh, from your point of view, it's on the back side. But it's a scale from 0 to 90 degrees. That's the height of Polaris for your location. Uh, here in San Jose, here at Cupertino, we're at uh, 37 degrees north latitude. So first level your tripod, make sure that the legs are uh, roughly level, so you just have to eyeball it, it doesn't have to be perfect. Get that level, and then loosen the knob on the side, and you can adjust the latitude scale up and down, that's adjusting this axis here, until you get it to 37 degrees, right about there. And lock it back down, now you know you've got the right height for Polaris, for your location. You also have to move it left and right so it's looking right at Polaris. So uh, let's just say I'm a little off from Polaris. Let's say Polaris is right there. Uh, that's basically north. So you have to find a uh, compass direction north and then move the telescope so that polar axis is pointing north and now at 38 degrees latitude. Lock it down and you're polar aligned. What that means is when you find something in the sky, so let's say now I'm looking at Jupiter, uh, and you lock down the knobs, the right ascension 
axis here. Just by spinning this one knob, it will follow the object as it moves through the sky because the Earth is only rotating in that one axis. So as long as you're polar aligned, one knob to recenter things. If you're off, if let's say you've pointed this polar uh, axis eastwards, you'll find that when you try to follow something, you're going to have to move both knobs in random directions, and it's much more difficult to, to locate objects and, and to keep them in the view. So uh, using the equatorial mount properly, having it pointed northwards, and just spinning the one knob in the one direction makes life a lot easier. So to view objects in the night sky, you've got uh, your eyepieces, and the eyepieces change the magnification. Uh, this scope comes with two, a 25 and a 10 millimeter plossal. Uh, it's the opposite of what most people think. The higher the number on the eyepiece, the lower the power. Uh, and the way you determine the power is that it's the focal length of the telescope divided by the focal length of the eyepiece. And it'll say it on the side of the telescope. This is a 650 millimeter focal length. So uh, I know that off the top of my head, 650 divided by 10, that's 65, millimeter, uh, 65 power at the high power. And then the uh, 25 millimeter is a little lower, so that's like 26 power. So start with your 25 millimeter. Start with the low power eyepiece in order to find the object you want. Pop the 25 in. Let's say Jupiter's over here. I'm going to loosen the knobs, manually move it to about the right area just by eyeballing along the tube. Then I'll use the finder scope to get it closer. I should see the object in the finder, get it right on the crosshair. Then lock the two knobs down and look through the eyepiece. It should be somewhere within the field of view as long as your finder scope is aligned. You can fine tune the positioning using the knobs, right ascension and declination, until you get the planet right in the middle of the field. Now, at 26 power, Jupiter's not going to look like too much. You'll, you'll see the four moons around it, but you won't see uh, the cloud belts on Jupiter. That's the too low power. So now it's time to pop the power up. As long as the planet is centered, pull out the low power eyepiece, put the high power one in, refocus a little bit until you get a nice sharp image, and now you're viewing more planetary detail uh, as you've gotten closer to the object itself. There are ways to enhance that even further. You can always get different eyepieces. Uh, one of my first suggestions is a Barlow lens. Uh, it doubles the power of any eyepiece, so just pull your eyepiece out once you've found it, pop the Barlow in, put the eyepiece back in, and now you've got twice the magnification. So at uh, starting at 65 power, now you're at 130 power, and the planets really come into good detail uh, at, at that magnification. Uh, if you're looking at the moon, we have a moon filter. Uh, it just threads onto the bottom of the eyepiece here and knocks down the brightness of the moon. It's like going outside on a sunny day without sunglasses. Uh, it's not going to damage your eyes, but when you see a very bright moon with a large aperture like this, uh, it can wash out the detail. So a moon filter is a nice handy accessory to have. One other tip I have about viewing deep sky objects instead of viewing planets, um, you can't see those objects naked eye. They're a little bit harder to find because they're fainter. But I hear a lot of people say it's because they need more magnification. Well, that's not true. Most deep sky objects are very big in the sky, much bigger than the area covered by a planet or the moon. Um, Andromeda, for instance, the Andromeda galaxy, you could stack many full moons across it and you wouldn't fill up. It's like four or five full moons, and even that's probably not enough. So you don't need high power to see the galaxy, you need a very low power and a very wide field of view. So while you use the Barlow and the high power eyepiece to zoom in on the planet, you want to step back and use the 25 millimeter for many of the big deep sky objects. So the 25 millimeter, locate uh, Andromeda, and if, uh, if you're in a darker sky site away from the city lights, you'll find that it goes across the entire field of view and might even spill out uh, past the field. So low power for most deep sky objects and high power for lunar and planetary detail. All right, so there you have it, the Space Probe 130 ST. Uh, that's a good overview for some tips and techniques for uh, getting the most out of it. Uh, I will suggest, please read the manual front to back. That will familiarize yourself with all the workings of the mount, the different parts, the pieces. Um, and then just getting some experience with it out under the night sky, starting with low power, going to high power. You'll get practice, you'll get experience, you'll learn what objects look best at what magnifications. And pretty soon you'll be really enjoying the, uh, the views through your new telescope and uh, seeing what there is out there in the sky to see. All right, thank you very much. Clear skies.
Hi everyone, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars and this is a, uh, a video on some tips and techniques to get up and running and how to use the Space Probe 130 ST uh, telescope. So I'm going to assume you've read the manual and you've familiarized yourself with the parts and you've got it to uh, pretty much this uh, level of uh, assembly already. So there's two things you need to do before you go outside and start viewing the night sky. Uh, the first is balancing the telescope and then the second is aligning the finder scope. Let's start with balancing. Uh, the two lock knobs, loosen them and you can move it east to west along the uh, right ascension axis here and then north and south along the declination axis here. To make sure it's balanced, just tip the telescope off to the side, uh, don't let go, uh, and 